Welcome to House of Horns. It's the off season, but big changes are on the horizon for the LA Rams. I'm Gilbert Manzano, Rams beat reporter for the OC Register, LA Daily News. And as always, joining me, Victor Javier Corona, Victor producer. Vic, it's the off season. A little slow, but it's okay. There's a lot to talk about here on House of Horns. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Um, it's good to be back. We've been away for a couple of weeks. You went skiing with uh, Oscar from The Office, you know, and I, I've been holding it down here. We've been waiting. I was like, yo, we got to get on, uh, respond to the people from for House of Horns. And uh, we're here. Happy to be back, but uh, enjoyed all the football while we went away. It's been some good games out there. So uh, it's good to be back, Gilbert. Yeah, I was trying to let the vacation uh, linger a little longer. I was trying to extend my, my vacation, and then I get a text from you says victor producer hey we need to do another house of horns episode and i'm like oh man i've been enjoying the off season just kicking back watching some playoff football but i started thinking you're right there's a lot to get into uh so you're setting me up here for uh what's to come you know we need to have a segment here where we, we uh give you guys a rundown of what's to come in this episode and i guess we're gonna call it uh house of horns off season episode one so uh Keep, keep so that way you keep in mind that there's gonna be a lot of content coming in the offseason, uh, NFL draft, free agency. Uh, but this episode is gonna be a lot about the coaching shuffling. Uh, there's guys that are having interviews like Raheem Morris, Zach Robinson, Greg Olson, who's to come. I'll, I'll ask that one, I'll, I'll ask you about that one in a little bit, uh, Victor. But also, I'm gonna get into Les Needs, the GM of the Rams. Uh, Les spoke to the reporters for his end of season news conference. Unfortunately, during my vacation, when I was a big bear. So I had to press pause a little bit. Maybe that's why I was extending my vacation, Victor, uh, because I had to work one day. I was in Big Bear. Uh, and maybe I should get I should share that story real quick. But I'll share the story after I do the more of the, the rundown before I get to the engagement question. But yes, we spoke to Les Neat on Zoom. We asked him about Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, uh, philosophy changes, possibly. Uh, a lot of the core players on their contract, and he was hinting pretty hard that he's not going to be uh, a guy who's looking to to trade veteran players to come in more like trading players to go out could it be Jalen Ramsey I see a lot of rumors out there but again we'll get into it and uh real quick before I get to the engagement question uh Victor yes it's correct I went skiing with Oscar Nunez Oscar from the office uh you know I've never gone skiing in my life before I just snowboarded one time when I was much younger I think I was like 19 years old uh, but never did skiing, so uh, me and my partner Caroline, we took a skiing class, and uh, Oscar was in that class as well. He uh, was kind enough to uh, help me out uh, to learn. So you know, he also he was also a beginner, but uh, he he was a day ahead of me. He was in Big Bear for the for I think for like the whole weekend or whatever it was. Uh, so he was giving me some pointers, and I'm like, "You're Oscar from the Office. I like your show, but I won't get too starstruck, so we could become friends." And now we're friends. Maybe one day he'll jump on the show either here or on Compass on the Beat. Well, yeah, it'd be nice because I, I saw Angela is a Broncos fan, so maybe oh. we can get him on here. And he he's uh, maybe he's a Rams fan. Who knows? We, we won't be able to find out. But uh, let's get to our engagement uh, question, Gilbert. And it has to do with some of the rumors that are going out there in terms of who might be the uh, um, OC of the Rams. Uh, there's been, you know, we saw that. Mike LaFleur got uh, um, fired by the by the Jets after one season there, I believe, um, oh, or two se- two seasons. Sorry, um, but uh, he and I mean it was a, I, I we won't get too much into it and ter- uh, you'll answer the question for us, but we'll get into it. But I thought it was very interesting that the Jets front office made uh, um, Sala fire one of his best friends, which was kind of tough there. So uh, just. Uh, but here's the engagement question for the people. Do you like Mike, Mike LaFleur as the next OC of the Rams? Yeah, uh, uh, signs are pointing to Mike LaFleur b- being the next OC uh, for Sean McVay. And I think today there was an update report from Justina Anderson saying that yeah, he has an inside track, Mike LaFleur. So, yes, Victor, that is the engagement question. So we want to hear from you, the listeners and viewers of House of Horns. Do you like this Pending higher from Sean McVay, uh, Mike LaFleur being the OC. It's a little interesting because uh, 
Uh, Michael Fleur worked a, a good amount of years under Kyle Shanahan, the rival there for Sean McVay, but obviously a lot of things cross over there in terms of scheme. Uh, but yeah, uh, Michael Fleur was fired by his good friend Robert Sala. I'm guessing they were close from the 49er days, and somebody needed to be the scapegoat. But uh, that's not, I guess, if you're a Rams fan, you're looking from the out, you're looking from the outside, and you're seeing the bad job that the Ram, I mean, the Jets offense did with Zach Wilson. Uh, yeah, you, you can laugh about that because Zach Wilson was pretty bad uh, yeah. this past year. So <laughs> I don't know uh, about this hire with Michael Lafleur, but I do know that Sean McVay and um, Matt Lafleur, the brother of Michael Lafleur, Matt Lafleur being the head coach of the, of the Packers, they're like pretty much BFF. They're best friends. So uh, maybe it could be like, hey, uh, can you look out for my brother? He's a good coach still. It was just a bad year uh, and they'll make it work. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about Michael Lafleur? You know, all signs point to him being the OC of the Rams to replace Liam Cohen. And I mean, it might this, you know, I know I know we weren't supposed to get into this, but it might point that uh, Sean McVay is still going to run his offense. He's going to be the one in charge of it. So who knows? We'll we'll find out. Uh, we're still waiting to hear the official announcement, but we just want to know from you guys what you guys think if this does become a reality. Uh, what are are you ready for news and notes, Gilbert? Uh, almost. But uh, okay. real quick, if you're watching this, maybe the news is already out, but we'll see for for the Mike Lafleur. But uh, this is some quick promos. I don't want to bore people, but uh, we have a lot of great content coming out on Compass on the Beat. That is our our, our flagship uh, channel where we have all the NFL content. We talk Rams, we talk Chargers, but we talk all 32 teams in the NFL. Uh, and we've been cranking out content throughout throughout the playoffs, so it, w- it wasn't like a like a, a legit quiet vacation for me because because we were working on combos on the beat. So if you want to support here the network combos on the beat. Uh, go support your compas on that channel as well. Subscribe YouTube, Apple, Spotify because we have a lot of content, especially for this week for the AFC title game and NFC title game, uh, Bengals, Chiefs, and 49ers, Eagles. So check that out. Subscribe and like we say, be a compa, tell a compa, subscribe. Here in House of Horns and over there as well, Combos on the Beat. But we have so many channels. We keep growing here, so we won't bore you. But that's the one we're really working on right now throughout the offseason uh, through for House of Horns. No offseason right. and Combos on the Beat. Uh, but also another thing that I wanted to announce is uh, we will be at Super Bowl Radio Row in Phoenix uh, for Super Bowl 57. So we will have one episode from there, House of Horns on Radio Row. So I can't wait for that. Uh, but Victor, we have so much for Compass on the Beat Network. Yeah, no, and as you were talking about for Compass on the Beat, um, we have Compass on the LA Beat, and we kind of got into a question on there that people have been responding um, in terms of the whole Jalen Ramsey. So, like, I, we always have content on there, even if we're not on here on House of Horns. There is stuff there for uh, Ram fans to go and check out because we do a little mashup between the Chargers and the Rams there where uh, you and Fernando get into it. So, but I also wanted to talk about homage. If, you know, just make it quick here, you know, make sure if you guys are looking for gear, check it, you know, help us out uh, by going to homage and uh, getting your uh, Rams gear from there. You know the the clothing is really nice. Uh, we've we've talked about it on the show before. So if you can go and uh, uh, support us, that would be great. Uh, if, especially if you're looking for gear. But let's go ahead and get Real to quick, link in the descriptions to make it easier for everybody. There you go. Thank you for uh, the assist there, Gilbert. And uh, let's get to news and notes because I know people are waiting to hear what uh, they've been what's been going on since we've been away. Yeah, I need to like maybe uh, catch my win here because it's going to be a long list here for, yes. for news and notes. And a lot of coaches uh, could be on the move or could come in could, could, could come, come in like Michael LeFleur. Uh, but I'll start off here with, with Rams quarterbacks coach Zach Robinson. He has interviewed with the L.A. Chargers for the O.C. job. And I think he's, he has or will interview with the Baltimore Ravens for also their offensive coordinator position. So Zach Robinson, uh, he... Worked his way up with the Rams as a wide receivers coach. So he was, you know, beneficial with Cooper Cup, Robert Woods when he was around, uh, even guys like Brandon Cooks, uh, OBJ has been around. So a lot of good receivers have been around uh, Zach Robinson. And he was inst- instrumental in getting these guys going. And they, they're big they're big fans of Zach Robinson. And then Robinson worked his way up to be quarterback's coach. And Matthew Stafford is also a big fan there. So it sounds sounds like Zach Robinson didn't get either the Baltimore job or or with the Chargers. I think he might be the favorite with the Chargers. 
Uh, but that's why it's going to be a long win the news and notes because he has a lot of competition, Zach Robinson, and they're from his uh, current co-workers with the Rams, uh, Thomas Brown, the assistant head coach of the Rams, who also helped out with the tight ends, tight ends coach, not tight ends, <laughs> but tight ends coach, and uh, the running backs. He has been big with the running game for, for, for the Rams, and Thomas Brown also interviewed for that Chargers OC job to be uh, the play caller for Justin Herbert, but also Thomas let me, Brown. Let me, let me cut in here so you can yeah. get a little bit of a breather here. But, yeah, you, you've you been talking about Zach Robinson and how good of a fit he is there. So I just wanted to give you kudos for that because you've been on it uh, for a while now, even before they announced the interview. Um, at least you talked about it on, on Compass on the Beat, uh, the big show there. Like I said, Compass on the LA Beat, you, you mentioned his name and why he might be a good fit. So... I mean, that might be somebody that the Rams might be losing uh, to the Chargers because of the connection there. Um, as you you stated, Brandon Staley is looking for a someone from the McVay tree for to be his offensive coordinator, especially now that Frank Wright ha, is going to Carolina. That's official, right? That he's going to yeah, he's already he's going to yeah. So that takes uh, a veteran off the board there for the Chargers. So. Yeah, I mean that those two guys might be in like uh, as you talked about between Zach uh, Robinson and then uh, t- uh, Thomas. What's uh, Thomas name? Brown, and it's actually going to be a, there's a third uh, Rams assistant there coach in the race, uh, Greg Olson. You know the name, uh, Victor yes, Greg Olson, uh, former uh, obviously coordinator for the Raiders, and I want to say also the, the Jaguars. Jaguars. Yes, and he had two stints with the Raiders, and they're kind of so so, right? Right. Uh, but uh, Greg Olson had a year with the Rams because, uh, you know, he, he's close with Sean McVay. When Sean McVay uh, was learning under John, John Gruden in Tampa Bay with the Buccaneers, Greg Olson was on that staff. So he said, call him over, uh, get over here. Uh, but also, you know, in terms of the Chargers point of view, Greg Olson you know, has a lot of a lot of experience. But that could be why maybe uh, uh, Victor, because they lost to Frank Wright. Maybe they want to experience coach uh, Greg Olson. But again, we've seen the track record. Uh, go ahead. You know this. One. No, I have a quick story, and um, I don't know if every anybody saw the locker room axes right after they beat the Raiders, the Rams. The game ball went to Greg Olson. Oh yeah, yeah, that was who he. Yeah, that's who he was a coach under the year before when the Raiders made the uh, playoffs. Uh, he took over the play calling for John once John Gruden was fired. So yeah. I thought it was very uh, funny for Sean McVay to have, give him the game ball for that game. But uh, just a quick story. It was it was yeah. just hilarious to me. Yeah, McVay uh, has his own has his own tree, but uh, he's under the John Gruden tree. Uh, but real quick on Thomas Brown, going back to Thomas Brown, um, uh, I feel like Zach Robinson and Thomas Brown, probably the, the two front runners there for, for the charges, but Thomas Brown also has, a uh, an interview or already had with the Washington commanders for the OC job over there with Ron Rivera. And he also got a head coaching interview, uh, with the Texans, but if I was him and he doesn't care for my advice, stay away from the Texans. Uh, but it, it sounds like either Thomas Brown could get a job with the commanders or chargers. Um, but it's also interesting, uh, Victor, before I get to, to the other one, is like for Sean McVay to move so fast on Michael Fleur and not wait for Zach Robinson or Thomas Brown, it kind of just tells you like these two guys are going to get a job somewhere else. Like they're just that respected. So I'm expecting that uh, for those uh, three guys who are interviewing. And uh, I don't have anything else to say before I move on to the other coaches. Yeah, no, I mean, in terms of those two, those two are the names that I've been hearing the most. Uh, I know I just saw the whole Greg Olson one just today. So um, that'll be interesting to see where where those guys end up. Uh, another thing that was kind of interesting in terms of, I know we talked about it on our last episode, is whether we're going to see uh, a mass exodus from this coaching staff. And I and it's starting to look like we are. Uh, maybe McVeigh told them, like, hey, I'm making – full changes here so if you need it if you're if you're looking for a job go ahead and take it at this point yeah somebody pointed out to me i don't know if it was being funny or it's actually a legit thing like uh uh sean mcveigh telling people to go look for jobs so you won't have to fire them he was so he doesn't have to be the bad guy because they're gonna get fired don't come over here and he's and maybe it was a good time to kind of think about stepping away because he doesn't want this coaching staff so uh i'm, I'm kidding but i'm we're half kidding because uh he's gonna be shaking up his coaching staff and i'll get into it real quick yeah. but going off of guys p- potentially leaving it sounds like raheem morris could be gone too raheem morris a defensive coordinator for the rams had 
two interviews for head coaching jobs with the Broncos and with the Colts. It's getting serious with the Colts, but he's because he's now in the second round there for interviews. He's going to get a second one. So imagine this coaching staff without Zach Robinson, Thomas Brown, Greg Olson, maybe Raheem Moore. That's a lot of big chunks there. Uh, before I get to the guys who have been reportedly fired, uh, what do you think about Raheem Morris potential being on the move and being a head coach? Well, from the comments we've gotten in terms of Raheem Morris, I know a lot of uh, people weren't happy with with him. And so I'm sure a lot of them are going to be happy to see him go if he does go. Um, it'll be interesting. I thought he did a good job, especially late in the season. So we'll find out what happens. Um but I, it, it, it'll be interesting if they do lose him, who Sean McVay turns to to fix that defense. Yeah, he's already set with uh, Mike LaFleur, it looks like. But I, I have a feeling it might be uh, Eric Henderson there, the defensive line uh, coach for the Rams, who is you know beloved by Aaron Donald. You want to make Aaron Donald happy. Uh, and then got other guys that who have been around, like Bobby Wagner. We'll see about Jalen Ramsey. We'll get into Jalen Ramsey. But uh, yes. I think uh, Coach Henny will be a, a great addition for the was a coordinator. And Sean McVay even uh, gave Coach Henny and also I want to say Chris Shula, the assistant uh, DB's coach, opportunities to call defensive plays in the preseason. So they have some experience there, which is I think is very cool for, for a coach to do. I think every coach should do that for their assistants, especially the ones that call plays, the head coaches. Uh, give your assistant a shot during the preseason. But uh, moving on, uh, I guess the, the downside of the business, coaches get fired, and then Sean McVay, I guess, wants a lot of changes. And here uh, were some reports. But also shout-out to Jordan Rodriguez of The Athletic. She's up. She's been on in with the assistant coaches. Uh, she was one of the people to report this. Uh, but the Rams reportedly fired offensive line coach. That's going to be a long list. Kevin Carberry, special teams coordinator. So it's going to be a coordinator. It might be three different coordinators, uh, Victor. Uh, Joe DeCamillis. Defensive backs coach Jonathan Cooley. Jonathan Cooley is a cool dude. I spoke to him in training camp. That, that's a, that, that sucks, but I'm sure he'll bounce back. Brandon Staley really likes Jonathan Cooley, so don't be surprised if he finds a job there. Yeah. Chargers, and he also got blocked for a job with the Vikings, so he will be in demand. Uh, assistant defensive line coach uh, Skyler Jones and defensive assistant Lance Schultzer. Schultzer. Hope I'm not butchering the name. That I can't. Schultzers. There you go, Schultzer. I can't really do that. <laughs> there, uh, but that kind of kind of tells you that all the changes they have. So that's five coaches there, and then maybe a few other corners are going to be gone. Not because they got fired, because they're moving on. So that's going to be a pretty much a brand new coaching staff, Victor. And I'm just curious to see what Sean McVay does. I know he he knows Mike Lafleur, but what about the other positions? Yeah, and and he's got a good tree out there. I'm sure he's gonna. Uh, he's already he's he's been grinding away the last couple of weeks, uh, having conversations with different people. I'm, I'm sure whatever he needs and in, in terms of money to go out and get the different coordinators that he wants from other staff, he's going to have his his choosing. And I'm sure people just because of the success that he's been able to have with the coaches that, you know, from his coaching tree, just look. Just go around the league. If if you're associated with him, they're hiring you. That's why Zach Robinson is getting a an interview right now. There's other guys that we've seen lately uh, get good, you know, uh, positions in in the NFL. So if if he calls your name, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, "Yep, I'll, I'll, I'm going over there," just because it'll it, it, it's it's another it's it's a faster way for me to get to my ultimate goal of becoming a coach. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, every there's a lot of coaches that are jump on the opportunity to be on, on his coaching staff. The, the funny thing about this, uh, Victor, like usually he's on the, on the other side where people take away his coaches and they're like in a long playoff run. And then by the time he goes and does a, the, the, the hiring process, a lot of these coaches already have jobs or they're somewhere else. So he's like, OK, well, who do I pick now? Uh, this time they have plenty of time to maybe poach uh, guys from other teams. We'll see, but there's a lot of blocking in the NFL. It's like a, is it a move to go up. They'll they'll allow it, but it's a kind of a lateral move. Uh, they won't allow, it, but we'll see. But he has time now, and there's no more excuse about oh we didn't get uh, the coaching process until February. So exactly. uh, we'll see what they do. But I'm ready to move on, Vic. All right, let's do. Uh, let's talk about uh, takeaways from uh, Les Needs presser, which was. Pretty interesting. There were some things in there that he talked about that I was kind of surprised. I think the big eye opener, and I and you're gonna get into it, was like it's time to pay up, which we always talk about. I'm like, eventually the bill's gonna come due. And I think for the Rams, it it was not only felt last season, 
but now they're they're starting to see the consequences of what I mean at least you won the Super Bowl and you're able to at least have that but now if you you if you're going to continue on with this path then you need to find ways to make sure that you have uh you you have help for those core players because you don't have a first round pick and you're going to need uh to be able to uh, create cap space, and I know we'll get into it. But uh, what was your biggest? What were your takeaways from the uh, Les Needs presser, Gilbert? Yeah, you know, as we, as we as we've been getting into this a lot lately on Comas and the Beat, like we talk about a rookie contract and how to kind of do other ways to build a franchise when you don't have a rookie contract. Quarterbacks take a pay cut. Uh, you do some maneuvering with the salary cap. You get savvy. You restructure contracts. Whatever it is. Uh, the Rams way was really aggressive, but it worked out. They won the Super Bowl. So paying the debt is not a problem because in life, sometimes you got to make that debt way. Just, you know, they're screaming at you, pay your bills. But now nah, we need to get to where we want to get to. That was a Super Bowl. But now the, the, the bill is due. And the in- interesting part about it with the Rams that they might have messed up. They were trying to get greedy for that one extra year and it all fell apart. Like they wanted to run it back. You, you, you saw Sean McVay and Aaron Donald at the parade saying run it back one more year. They could have been paying the tab already. I don't know. They didn't do it. So now they went through a five and twelve season. Uh, they, they 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 now they're like, okay. We have to start paying the bills, and that's what uh, uh, Les Snead said. And and I thought it was a very honest uh, press conference with the reporters uh, on Zoom. And he was like saying like, you know, we're gonna be pumping the brakes now. We're not gonna be all all gas no brakes. That approach is not the way to do. It. It's not smart. He didn't say for sure they're done with that. But he kept saying, like, yeah, we have a lot of core veteran players on contracts. A lot, of, a lot of them are, like, at the end of their prime, but that doesn't mean they won't be producing. So it was a lot of back and forth there. But a lot of, like, okay, yeah, maybe the philosophy change is to start focusing on the picks. And the, the, the tough part about it, too, Victor, because they have so many guys on the contract, a lot of good players in their prime who don't want to do a rebuild. So he called it a remodel instead of a rebuild, which, you know, g- good words there to choose. Uh, but you're 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 in a tricky situation, like you mentioned, no first round pick, and then you're 14 million dollars over the cap, and then this roster is not ready to compete now. Like I, I let's be real. Maybe they could do a quick rebound and 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 the way they're structured right now, I don't see them being a super contender. Maybe they'll make a wild card. I I don't know because they have the star players on the contract to do a quick rebound, but I just don't know how far it's gonna get you. And like we always say, don't be in the middle, don't be in the seventh seed, and then you're stuck with all this money and then you have no draft picks and you don't have a dra- high draft pick. So it's going to be interesting how they do it. Like if they want to become a contender and, and then not upset Aaron Donald, don't upset Cooper cup, don't upset Matthew Stafford. All these guys want to win now. Then you got to, you know, give something to take something. And that's why I think we all start hearing the reports about Jalen Ramsey being on the move because he has a cap hit of $25 million. He had a great end of the season. It was kind of shaky up and down, like we mentioned all year in House of Horns, but he still has some value. He could give you a first-round pick, not a first-round pick, but he could give you potentially a second or third-round pick. The reason why I don't say first-round pick is because he needs to get paid, and when you got the pay, that's, that's, that's kind of part of the demands too. Uh, I know I'm rambling here, but I'll, we'll get into I'll let you he- share your thoughts on this, but all signs point to them making a move to still be contenders to make this core group. But one core guy has to go, and all signs point to Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, and it, it's going to be interesting. This is this is a very interesting offseason for the Rams because, as you talked about, you have uh, five core players that you want to keep. There are some players that you can cut and make expendable for you to get under the cap. And then as you talked about, you don't want to be in the middle, you know, of one of those teams where are we are we either going to be competing for a Super Bowl or should we just blow it up and then start over again? And so you don't want to say that to one, your fan base and two, you don't want to say that to your core players, especially if Aaron Donald's coming back, you know, Matthew Stafford and so on. And so it's going to be very important how they maneuver this cap in the next few months, especially during March and April. I mean, you also have June where you can do the the post uh, um, cut uh, where you can cut some salary. You know, you take some dead money, but at least you get some cap relief there. 
uh, we've talked about there's some offensive linemen that you can you can uh, cut. There's some players on like as you talked about with Jalen Ramsey. And I have a feeling if he does get moved, there's one place, and I I told you guys on uh, we, we talked about it, and I think it's it's gonna the perfect fit for them is the Lions because they're looking for secondary help, they have money under the cap, and they have draft picks, and maybe you can get a draft pick back, and then there's a connection with the GM. So if there is a trade possibility for at least on on my end. I would say that there's a big now whether he wants to go to the Lions or not, that's another conversation. But I'll say that at least for that, it you know, um, it's it's something to keep in mind there that Jalen Ramsey would be the one that ends up being the one that gets either cut or re, or uh, traded. Yeah, you know, and the reason why we're, we're going with Jalen Ramsey is because like that. Aaron Donald is still the best in the world at his position. I know he was hurt, but also his contract is massive. You can't trade that guy. It's going to really hurt your cap. So you can't really move him. Uh, I think they're committed to Matthew Stafford. I know he has injuries and a lot of question marks, but also who's going to take on that risk of a injured quarterback and all the money that's coming his way. Like he was there, They moved a lot of money around the first earlier years of Stafford, but now the money's coming up. Uh, I think Cooper Cup is still in, in his prime, and, and he just signed a new contract too. Like, Stafford, Donald, and Cup just signed a contract last year. So they're definitely, I think, in part of this next phase. By the way, Lesney called this phase three of the Sean McVay era. And he kept saying this phase is more similar to the first one when he came in, Sean McVay, to fix with everything they messed up with Jeff Fisher and then become a quick playoff team. So you won't be like a quick Super Bowl contender, but you want to be competitive and fix a lot of holes because phase two was when you became a real threat to win the Super Bowl. So I don't think they, like, that's the weird thing. They're, that's still a little bit in the middle, but at least you're good to maybe make a run and you sell tickets. Remember, Victor, it's all about selling tickets in LA. So you got to be competitive. So I think it's more like that 2017 year, but they were really good and they got a lot of great offense from Sean McVay's new scheme and everybody was like amazed by it. But they lost in the wild card round to the Falcons at the Coliseum. I actually covered that game at the Las Vegas, for Las Vegas Review Journal. Uh, people were surprised about it, but that's what they're trying to get to. Uh, but Jalen Ramsey has one more year on his contract. So the only way I could, could potentially see a first round pick for him, it's going to be tough because he's an older cornerback who might do very well at safety too. So he brings value also a very versatile DB is if James like, Hey, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll just play in the contract I have. You don't need to worry about paying me. I'm, I'm not going to make a big deal here. Let's make it easy, and the Rams get a first-round pick. But I, I'm sure Jalen Ramsey wants his money after this first year, after this year, 2023. No guaranteed money coming his way, so the team could cut him. He has no security, so he's going to try to leverage a contract. And you know, Jalen Ramsey keeps talking about. You know, he told me, uh, uh, you know, for the story I did, the also register, he wants to play with Derwin James and the Chargers. Brandon Staley wants to play, uh, wants to have Jalen, Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James on his defense. That's somewhere to look to. The only issue is the cap space there. But I do know that Tom Telesco is very savvy with the cap space. Maybe they can make it work. But uh, we'll see what happens. But I think for Jalen Ramsey, is more kind of on the second and third round pick. And I wonder what Jalen Ramsey thinks about all these rumors, too. Like, he must be annoyed by this. Does he even want to leave? Does he want to stay? I don't know. Maybe that uh, IG post that he has saying, like, you know, I don't know what the what the future brings or whatever it was. Maybe he was on to something there. Maybe he, re- he read the writing on the wall. Um and also, too, a part of it with the coaching stuff, like if Raheem Morris is gone, like that that's his boy. Like maybe it's time for a change for, for Jalen Ramsey. Uh, but it's going to be interesting, too. Like what do they do to compete? Uh, you know, you still got to fix your offensive line. Like you have that second round pick because you didn't trade it for CMC. Like you got to go out. You got to go offensive alignment, right, with the early picks. But what do you if you trade Jalen Ramsey, what do you do in the secondary? I know people, they like the Kobe Durant, but he's more of a slot guy. Is Darion Kendrick ready to be an outside guy? Can Darion Kendrick and Troy Hill? Be outside guys. So when you give up that big court piece, you're gonna be hurting in the secondary. So uh Vic, I don't know how you feel about the consequences of the trade general Ramsey. Yeah, no, I you you yeah, I got stuck with uh less uh less need. I I, I started kind of kind of started getting I was nerding out because I'm like, wait, is he going by the MCU phases? Is he going phase one, yeah. phase two, <laughs> now phase three? In Maybe. phase three of the MCU, we got Infinity War and Endgame, so maybe that's that's why he's saying uh, Phase Three is going to be uh, like uh, Phase uh, Phase Two. So um, you know, and in terms of Jalen Ramsey, it, it'll be interesting. I mean, the way he's tweeting out, it seems like the writing's on the wall. Like 
he's either been told or he's had conversations with the Rams and it's pretty much, he's kind of facing reality at this point, Gilbert. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in phase one of the Sean McVay era. Maybe we're all wrong and it's not Jalen Ramsey, uh, but just kind of looking at the contract and then the other other part of it too, uh, Victor, because yeah, they need to pay the debt. They, They need to focus on the young players uh, but the other part of uh, of paying the debt, I think it's going to be involving Leonard Floyd. Uh, he has a, a, a nice chunk of change coming in 2023. I think he ha- might not have any guaranteed money. So you could definitely cut up and save a lot of money. That's one way to do it, too. You want to keep Jalen Ramsey, but I think they're going to have to cut both of those guys, Leonard Floyd and Jalen Ramsey. But then, again, same question with Ramsey. You cut him or, or you, I mean, you trade him. You can't cut him. But if you trade him, what's going to happen to your secondary? And even your safety group is not doing too well either. Like, uh, uh, Nick Scott's a free agent. Taylor Rapp was a free agent, but I know people are not happy with Taylor Rapp. So that secondary is going to be different. Now, also the edge rusher group. If you if, if you give up on Leonard Floyd, which I think he played kind of well down the stretch, maybe not so much in the early part of the year, uh, and you're trying to save money, you, you what are you going to do with edge rushers? So there's so many holes here. So yeah, you could give up a core guy to fix your salary cap and maybe get a draft pick. But will you be competitive after you do that? I just don't know. Yeah. And one of the things that I've seen in terms of following football now for the last, and especially the cap, the last 10 years, is one of the things I've noticed is you, especially with the these high level teams, is they always find they, they go and they get about five to 10 players on one year contracts. And especially if you're just trying to win the, you're going for it. You're a team that, Hey, we have our core core players. We just need players to fill in and, and come in that are veterans. You're going to find those guys, you know, and then next year, maybe next year, that's the year that you say, you know what, we're going to give this core one or two more years. And then after that, we're just going to re- rebuild because we can't keep doing this. And that that comes with Stafford and Aaron Donald pretty pretty much deciding if they're going to retire. Once once they get that word, then they'll, I think, move on to the next phase, as he called it, which would be phase four, which has been pretty terrible in the MCU, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, let, let's hope it's not that trend. Uh, but, yeah. Victor, it kind of sounds like they're going to be, if they're trying to win for a couple more years before for this core group that we mentioned, Cup, Donald and stuff, which might have one or two years, like they might be stuck in the if, if everything goes well, they might be stuck in the Cowboys kind of uh phase where like they're just in the second round and that's it. Is that okay with people? I guess, but you don't have a first round pick, so maybe it's okay. You're selling tickets, you're relevant, but you're not a Super Bowl contender. Maybe even the Buffalo Bills, you're in the second round, that's it. And then I said they're lucky. If that gets like you mentioned, get the free agents to come in, the veteran guys who want to come in on one year deal. Uh, you hit on a couple picks, like the second round picks that you have this year, and I think a third, maybe a third round pick, I forget. Uh, but they have 10 picks coming. Let's see, so they have 10 picks, and a few, a few of them are, are a comp pick. So, yeah, you know, maybe they, they could hit and you become a divisional round uh, team, and maybe people are happy with that. Uh, but before I move on to the, the comments that we saw on, on, on the House of Phones YouTube, maybe I'm gonna throw another engagement question Do you want Jalen Ramsey to be traded to get a second or third round draft pick? I don't know about first round pick. Uh, but to free up some salary cap and then also get a draft pick. Is that a good thing for you guys, uh, listeners of the House of Forms? Do you want to see Jalen Ramsey trade it or do you want to go another way? Like let him go Leonard Floyd and just trying to figure out other ways to free up some money. Uh, let us know in the comments. Yeah, no, and I, it, it'll be interesting. Like I said, this is only episode one and we got a lot to talk about in terms of this offseason just because of everything that – uh, that this team needs to go through. I mean, there's a lot of holes they need to fill. There's a lot of uh, how are they going to get under the cap? And as you talked about, who are some of the players who are going to have to be sacrificed in order to get yourself back to the Super Bowl? Because as you talked about, like, I, and I think that this is part of the trend is, is when you're dealing with the salary cap, you're also dealing with the other teams in L.A., and as we've seen, like the Lakers, they, they, they're out of draft picks till 2027. That tells you everybody is trying to compete here, and you're even competing with other teams here in L.A. And the same thing with the Rams. They're going all in every year. And so I just – it's going to be hard for me to see this team trying to rebuild uh, for a couple of years because they're all in all the time, at least since Sean McVay has arrived. So, But uh, let's go ahead and get to our – 
uh, comments from our uh, House of Forms community section, uh, Gilbert. Uh, let me let me start off here mm -hmm. and uh, let's let's who who let's see who we have first. We have uh, John Jacobs. He says, "Go for an edge rusher, um, a running back, or an O line. Get some depth at all of the main positions to get our top guys some rest." What do you think about that, Gilbert? Sounds like John wants the whole world. He wants everything. Uh, but he makes good points, though. And, and and I asked this question on on House of Horns community section. What upgrades do you want to see for the roster? And 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 it sounds like a lot for for John Jacobs there. Uh, but they do need to address those positions. And that's the thing about this roster. It's a that's why Les Snead's in a very unique situation. It's a very top heavy roster with a lot of stars. But there's a lot of like issues, like you mentioned, edge rusher, running back, O line, and possibly now secondary. I guess you know what? Even with Ramsey, if he's still there, you got to address the safety group. So secondary is going to be an issue. So that's a lot of positions there, and especially your offensive line. Like besides Rob Havenstein, like like that, that's another name to think about. Like, can you get out of the Joe Nopum contract? Like you save that's some money. Like, do you give up on Joe Nopum? Do you give him another year? It's just weird for me how like he had these great spot starts for Andrew Whitworth. And that, and they thought he was ready to go, and he just really struggled the first part of the year. I mean, it could be because, as you know, Victor, football it takes all eleven guys on offense, eleven guys on defense, and they, nothing was clicking for that team. Uh, but when they were healthy, even Joe Nopum was struggling. So uh, they got upgrades when Tiny Seki came in, uh, Alaric Jackson came in. So I don't know if they, maybe one of those two guys could be the filling left tackle. That's asking a lot, and you could maybe get rid of the Nopum contract. But also, if Nopum struggled. Who wants that? Who wants to take on that contract? How do you get rid of him? How do you do you kind of just say, hey, just take the contract? We don't even want to pick. Give us a six round pick. We see that a lot in the NFL. Uh, but for me, the biggest priority is the offensive line. You got to fix that up somehow. I want to say David Edwards, a free agent. I want to say Brian Allen, the center. So changes are coming regardless. Like besides Coleman Shelton, I think Coleman Shelton needs to stay because when you have a utility guy who could play center and guard, that's big for in case emergency. So besides, you know, Rob and Coleman. Yeah, what do you do? Do you draft guys? Logan Bruss, we can't forget about him. That's what uh, I was going to bring up. <laughs> third round pick. So he could be healthy and ready to go. But again, after what happened last year. And also, uh, Sean McBear really likes Tremaine Edwards. He's a Walter Payne Man of the Year nominee for the Rams. and uh, But none of these guys got to shine because they got hurt. So maybe that's one way to do it. Like They, pre they prepared ahead. It's just we didn't see them last year because they got hurt. So that could be something there, Victor. But uh, go ahead and, and share your thoughts on edge rusher, running back, old line. What what the heck does this team? Uh, yeah, team I mean, it, it, like I said, you're gonna have to go and and fill these positions uh, with one year contracts out there. I mean, we've seen it. That's how that's how they've been get, able to get some of these players and kind of re-sign them. I think, like as you talked about, Joe Noboom is a post uh, June first cut. You save seven point five million for that one. Uh, Alan Robinson is another guy that I haven't brought up. I, I need to look at his, uh, how his uh, contract is structured because I, I, I think that experiment might be over after one year because I don't think people were too happy. You could do another thing like I mentioned, just flip them for a six-round pick and just take the contract. Yeah. Or maybe no draft pick, a seven-round pick. I don't know. Yeah, so we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, like, like I said, there's so many players we haven't even brought up that it, it'll be interesting to see. In terms of a running back, I just don't know. I just don't see it. I mean, you you got Cam, Cam Akers. Akers, like you you have him for another season and on in his rookie contract. Just continue to do what you did last season with him, and and you still have uh, the rookie Kyron Williams that you can still. The biggest thing is going to be the offensive line, as I talked about. You brought up Russ Logan. That was a guy that I was like, uh, I was going to bring up because he's he's someone. And you, you're just gonna have to draft and hope that you the guy the offensive line coach can develop your your uh, line because that's the way to do it nowadays, Gilbert. I mean, you have yeah. to you have to draft uh, offensive linemen who can play multiple positions, and because you you can only uh, suit up uh, you know a few amount of O linemen every game, and so you want them to be able to play tackle. And and uh, and guard. So you know that's why you go and you spend your your draft capital, especially since you said as you said, there's some comp picks there that you have. Use those comp picks to get your offensive line strain out. Well, let, let me give you this uh, potential offensive lineup for the Rams 
week one of 2023 season and tell me if you like it or you hate it don't even think about it because yeah. say they want to replace Jalen ramsey and use a second round pick on a corner and that'll be big for them would you be okay with you know alaric jackson or tiny Seki a left tackle uh i guess left guard uh, could be logan bruss center coleman shelton full-time center and then your right guard could be tremaine ankrum and then your right tackle could be Rob Havenstein. Is that, you get cheap, you go away, you get maybe by one more year, or is that a disaster waiting to happen? What do you think? That's a disaster waiting <laughs> to happen. You're going to have to upgrade, get a yeah. veteran at least to come in and help out. And then maybe, maybe, you know, like I said, you have to build this offensive line through the draft and maybe go and pick up one, one or two veterans. I'm not saying go out and spend because there's not a lot of good offensive linemen out there uh, during free agency, but at least go and pick up uh, somebody that, that can kind of hold hold down the fort, you know, uh, for one year, uh, especially if you can get somebody on a one-year deal because you can always find those yeah. guys. All uh, right, yeah, but go ahead. Let's get to our next. Uh, Brian Sutherland says, Edge interior O-line. And maybe a better old line coach that can bring it all together, as we were talking about. So, yeah. um, what's the status on the offensive line coach, Gilbert? Yeah, they they I guess the reports are true. They're gonna fire Kevin uh, Carberry. So, uh, it sucks, man, because like his offensive line was decimated by injuries. Uh, but I guess when they were healthy, they weren't run blocking, they weren't pass protecting. So maybe there was an issue there with the coaching. But uh, yeah, I just don't know what happens. You know, again, that's going to be an opportunity for for Shaman Bay to poach somebody from a different staff because he has the time now and he has a big name there. Uh, but first, he has to figure out what the heck is going to happen with the coordinators, and then he's going to forget go to the position coaches, or he already has guys in mind. And he's just ready for everything, and kind of everything shuffles out, and then you're ready to make your moves. But they, they that's a good point. And then from from Brian, they do need to have a better old line coach. I don't know who's going to be. We'll see who's out there. Uh, there's a few names out there, but none of them are connected for the Rams right now. So we'll see. But I'll go with the beginning part of the, of the comments. It's a little repetitive from, from John Jacobs, but we ho- we focus a lot on the offensive line. So uh, I'm just curious what happens with Edge Rusher. He had he put Edge exclamation point on the comment, and that's a big thing. And maybe it could be priority number one. I feel like offensive line Edge Rushers, they kind of go hand in hand. And if you let go of Leonard Floyd, or maybe you bring him back, I don't know. If you let go of Leonard Floyd, is Michael Hoyt going to be your only guy that's going to be available? That's another, like I mentioned, a disaster where it happens. So, like, say they make all these moves, Vic, and you're there with your second round pick, and you're like, offensive line, we just traded Jalen Ramsey, a corner, we just let go of Leonard Floyd, edge rusher. What do you do with that first pick? Because you these are all positions you need to upgrade quickly. But again, like you mentioned, it could be a veteran out there. Uh, but I would say line is hard to find veteran help. Edge rusher, you could maybe get away with finding a veteran. Uh, I know the Raiders tried with Chandler Jones. That did not work out. But sometimes it does. But it's easier to find maybe an edge rusher on the market. So maybe they could get away with it. Uh, cornerback, not, it's kind of hard too, I feel like. But uh, it's going to be interesting because they don't have much there if they really let go of Leonard Floyd. And I think they will because they, they need to save some money. So uh, I'm very curious to see what they do with edge rusher come this offseason. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I know we keep we keep talking about it, but it's going to be very interesting to see where they go f- with some of these players because they have to cut players in order to make room and, you know, it it's going it's it sucks that they might have to cut Leonard Floyd, but you have to start somewhere and, you know, and like I said, there's always guys that you can find on one-year deals. You can go and use the draft as well, your draft capital to pick up some players out there and you know we always we they you know teams always find a way like they always find players there's always a player that you know comes out of nowhere he wasn't happy with his rookie contract where where he was at and then he goes to his new team and falls out like we've seen that before Gilbert so yeah we we don't know what players are going to be out there that you know, they're going to be able to pick up. And there's always surprises, man. Like, you know, we, we just sometimes fixate too much on the big names. And then next thing you know, like some dude they pick up on a one-year contract blows up. And look at Hassan Reddick. Hassan yeah. Reddick yeah. went, went, went to – where did he go? Did he – he went Eagles. to uh, – yeah, but before that, he went to Carolina, I think. I want to say – 
Was it Ari- yeah, Arizona he went from Carolina? Arizona to, to Carolina. To Carolina you're right, you're right. And he balled out with Carolina, and then he got a big contract with the Eagles. And look at – I mean, it he's always happens. Well. Yeah, he's doing well. So it, it's all about the next opportunity, and there's always guys out there. Uh, let's go to where is Seek, he says. <laughs> I don't know where Seek is. <laughs> it all starts at the O-line. Research some contracts again. Maybe go after an edge. Or OBJ again, uh, resign great games. Our defense was underrated last year. Uh, I will say this, Gilbert. I yeah. hope they do resign great games because yeah. he is somebody that I I really appreciated watching this season. I know that there's a whole uh, uh, thing with uh, white guys alignment who say they have a uh, big uh, high mortar. He does, man. Like the guy would just flash every time. You know, I would watch uh, him play. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, how they go about if they're gonna. I know, don't they hold his rights though? Um, I think or, he's a, I think he's unrestricted free agent. He might be, I might be wrong, but I think he is a uh, unrestricted, so he might be he could go. But like, like you mentioned, man, uh, when Aaron Donald was gone, uh, and even uh, Ashawn Robinson, he really stepped up Greg Gaines, and it was nice to see Greg Gaines actually like get some plays. You know, it all goes to Aaron Donald, and it's and I go back to my conversation with Greg Gaines, and and it's funny when I spoke to him. I, I thought he's gonna just tell me like, "Man, this sucks without Aaron Donald out there. My life is miserable." And he's like, "You know what? Teams are are not uh, are not throwing the ball quickly. They're not there's, they're they're not afraid of people. So I get opportunities to rush a passer, and oh, my job is not to help out Aaron Donald. My job is to go after the passers. He was making a lot of plays, and he stepped up. But also too, I think uh, Raheem Morris had the quote like, "He's the meat and potatoes of what they do up top." Uh, so. He doesn't mind the dirty work. You need a guy who doesn't mind the dirty work. And then when there's injuries, I got to step up. And that's what Greg Gaines did. By the way, when Greg Gaines hurt his shoulder and he was kind of, you know, uh, feeling the pain there, that's when the when the run defense really went to the crapper. Because for a while, they were holding it down with Greg Gaines. And it wasn't too bad. But then when he was definitely hurting, that's it. There's nothing else he could do. So I think he's definitely a priority free agent for this team. Uh, he's definitely one of the ones that comes to my mind when it's like, you got to get it done. Uh, as for another another comment from there, Zeke, uh, move on from OBJ. No more OBJ. Wide receiver, uh, yeah, you could use more explosive plays from from playmakers, but it should be the least of your concerns right now. We're not. We just talked about this whole show: edge rusher, offensive lineman, uh, possibly secondary. So uh, don't worry about receivers just yet. You can yeah. always draft uh, one in the late round. But when you have Cooper Cup, and I think Van Jefferson showed me enough that he is, he could be a number two guy if he wants to. Uh, Tutu, Tutu Atwell is up and down, but he showed flashes. But again, Victor, like you probably will say right now, you could draft one and maybe find one in the back end of free agency. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you, you, those kind of positions where you you're set, don't don't waste uh, your time trying to. I mean, oh, there's a reason why OBJ wasn't ready to go. I mean, we still don't know if he's healthy. I mean, everybody was talking about him coming back in November and December. We still haven't heard anything, Gilbert. Yeah, so that injury takes a while, and then it's going to be going to be a year older. Uh, and this team is not an OBJ player away, so you also don't want to deal with the kind of the the drama that comes with it. And I know he was a great teammate with the Rams, but they're not that team anymore. Like the the vine or the viral thing that says you're not that guy, pal. Uh, you're not that team anymore. You're not a Super Bowl contender. Just groom your guys, get younger, don't get older. Uh, but if you were that team, maybe OBJ could help you. But no, uh, get guys like Greg Gaines back. He deserves it. Uh, Victor, I think we got one more comment before, before we say goodbye. Yes. Uh, the last one, it says, hell for Ramsey. And we, I mean, it'll be hey. interesting to see if he's he's back. It, it, you know, that's somebody that they might need to uh, they might need to use to be able to free up some cap space, Gilbert. Yeah, but it's good to see one person wants Ramsey around Zerbo five three two, and the, the, I'll say this last thing on Ramsey. I think a lot of people have their memory stuck on him getting you know torched by Stefan Diggs in Week One against the Bills, and what other other games I forget. Maybe Devontae Adams a couple of times in that Raiders game, but for the most part, he plays he played well. He does so much for the defense, and when you're when you're doing four different things. And then also too, like this guy could de- definitely move the safety and, and ball out. Like Brandon, like I mentioned, Brandon Sadie, the head coach of the Chargers, he said he could see a Charles Woodson like shift there and also be a Pro Bowl or safety. So this guy has plenty left in the tank. So Zerbo five three two help for Ramsey. It's good to see somebody uh, say uh, keep Ramsey and, and make it work. But it's going to be tough, like we mentioned all show. 
Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where they go with Ramsey, who they cut, how do they go about making, you know, a room in the cap for some of these players. I mean, that's part of uh, the what's hard about being a champion and being a Super Bowl contender every single year. When and I know, I know we've had this conversation, Gilbert. It's kind of tough when you're top heavy and you're having to have other other players step up for you. Yeah, and it's nice to have a rookie quarterback on the rookie contract, but they don't have this luxury here, yeah. Victor. Uh, they have a older veteran quarterback coming off injury, so we'll see who how that. That's like that could be a whole episode. Matthew Stafford, can he be the same guy? Uh, we will find out. But that's it here for House of Horns for this offseason episode one. We're going to have a lot of content coming out. And by the way, shout out to you, Victor, because I see you upgraded the House of Horns here, uh, the background. And I like the little touch there. I'm sure people have noticed as well. Yeah, no, we wanted to start off the the new season, the off season with the bang here. And uh, we wanted to make a couple changes ourselves. We're uh, restructuring ourselves. Uh, we don't have a salary cap, so we can yeah. uh, kind of splurge here. Not that we spend anything on this, but uh, yeah, I mean, we wanna we wanna take it to the next level. We wanna get to that uh, uh, where the Rams are with uh, coming off their Super Bowl, and hopefully they can uh, you know rebound this off season and uh, make a run. So we wanna be right with uh, we'll be right there with you guys, and uh, it's good. Uh, Hopefully we have more change. We will have more changes coming up, Gilbert. Um, this is not. This is only the start, um, especially for season season number two. When you know in September, but uh, uh, in the meanwhile, we got a lot of uh, construction going on ourselves. Yeah, and, and, and last thing before we go, I just want to say, make sure to tell your compas, your friends, to subscribe to the channel House of Horns. Also check us out on on the audio version, Apple Podcasts. Spotify. We're trying to grow here. We're trying to get to the 500 subscribers. We've kind of been stuck there. Uh, so again, be a compa, tell a compa, get us there. Uh, and then if you're already, already subscribed, just leave comments. We love to see the engagement. We post in the community section. Whenever we have a video, just post what what's up. I was going to say the other channel. What's up, Boats? That's the other one. Uh, but uh, what's up, compas here? And uh, I like I like every time we post a video and the next day in the morning, I check and I see the comments. It's always, hey, what's up, compas, uh, uh, Victor and, and Gil? Uh, so I, I like to see in the comments. So whatever you guys want to say, go ahead. Uh, you want to talk Rams? We're going to try to get to the, all the comments as well. So that's the biggest thing is the engagement. And check out all the channels. What's up, both? That's the Chargers channel. I know maybe you don't care about the Chargers, but maybe you draft one in fantasy the next season. Uh, check out Combos on the Beat for the NFL content. If you're a boxing fan, fight fan like us, MMA, wrestling, combat compas. Uh, and we're going to keep growing to more channels. We, we have Compas FC for the soccer fans. Uh, we might even do an entertainment channel. So we do it all here on the Combos on the Beat Network. Yeah, please. You know, I we're, we're just really thankful for the community because everybody's there. We've had different people on there uh, give us their their feedback we've had people you know tell us what they want from the show so that's really cool and just people commenting you know and and anytime i tell gilbert hey let's let's try to see let's try to answer some of these questions so that way people you know that way they know that we're here for them and you know hey this is possible because of uh, people who listen people who watch this show and uh, if we keep getting more subscribers and we keep getting more feedback, we're going to be able to come on here uh, more often, more than we've been lately. But we'll get on here and uh, we'll answer some of your questions. And anything, if anything breaks, we'll be on here. Right, right Gilbert? That's the biggest thing. We're, we need some breaking news. And may, there wasn't much for a while. So that's why I was kind of letting my vacation go a little longer. Uh, but uh, I guess maybe the next episode might be from Super Bowl Radio Row in Phoenix in the Phoenix Convention Center. House of Horns will be there and Compass on the Beat Network. Uh, but again, if breaking news occurs, maybe some coaches get hired, maybe a trade happens, whatever. We'll be on it, we'll be on call. Uh, but if not, we'll see you in Phoenix. Is that it, Victor? Anything else you want to say? No, just yeah, give us give leave leave comments for us, let, let us know. What uh, any if you have any questions uh, that you might want or somebody we can get uh, so that way we can ask them some questions uh, for Radio Row. Other than that, that's it from me.
Yeah, hopefully we see a couple of Rams players hanging around at Radio Row Super Bowl. And we'll be like, hey, come over here. Talk to us. Uh, the fans uh, of House of Horns want to listen to you. Uh, so hopefully we can make that happen. Maybe guys like Bobby Wagner are walking around. Maybe Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford. Maybe even Jalen Ramsey's walking around. We were asking the questions uh, ourselves. So on that note, ya nos vamos. Pues, vámonos. <laughs>